things. We have a Bitcoin shorted Chico jarheads. The gobble goos are swallowing up all that can be produced. Is it true? Find out because it's time for Chico Crypto. So supply versus demand. It's two simple concepts which create the abstract thing everyone knows as value. The value of things boils down to this. How many there are of it supply and is it wanted demand? Y'all can hate all you want and say I'm lying or whatever, right? I lifted up this shelf right there. That pack was laying there. Salaries of jobs are created based on this. Prices of assets, commodities, services, and goods are created based on this. Wherever value is transferred in this world, supply and demand is a critical function. Thus, supply and demand defines economic value. Since the dawn of humankind, everything in this world has had a perceived unlimited supply. From animals, to land, to gold, to water, to oil. Literally, humans have consumed from cavemen to us today like there is no supply cap with anything. We will even consume it until it vanishes forever off this earth. Just look into species made extinct by human activities and you get it. But now humans are even figuring out how to increase the supply of extinct animals for our personal needs. DNA, cloning, the next Jurassic Park. Even when the supply runs out, humans want more of it. Humans have a need to consume at all costs. So what does that mean for Bitcoin? As we know, Bitcoin was the first truly supply capped asset ever created in this world. 21 million, that's all that will ever be created and humans can't even clone it, even if they tried and they put all their knowledge and power they could to do that. That goes against what we have ever known since the dawn of our time, the laws of consumption. There always has been a way to figure out how to get more, except with Bitcoin. Thus, this has flipped the definition of economic value for Bitcoin on its head. It's the reason Bitcoin went from worthless to looking like reclaiming $20,000 in just over 10 years. It's the fastest and highest returning asset in the history of humankind, and in my opinion, it's only the beginning. So you may be saying, damn Chico, why are you so bullish? Well, anyone should be bullish on BTC long term when compared with an ever inflating supply of government controlled fiat currencies. But did you hear what I said, long term? Be aware of headlines like this from my future competitor Cointelegraph. Bitcoin shortage is real and PayPal is the cause, Pantera Capital claims. Which Pantera does, a VC perm put out this Medium post and it says, PayPal's crypto infrastructure provider is Paxos. Prior to PayPal's integration of crypto, it bit the Paxos run exchange was doing a fairly constant amount of trading volume, the white line in the chart below. When PayPal went live, volume started exploding. The increase in bit volume implies that within four weeks of going live, PayPal is already buying almost 70% of the new supply of Bitcoins. PayPal and Cash App are already buying more than 100% of all newly issued Bitcoins. And in the chart, they show that, yeah, it's true. Volume on ItBit, the orange line, was getting close and finally exceeded the value of the daily amount of newly minted BTC, the dashed line. Although trading volume is the buying and selling of an asset, not just one, so that is false that this is all buy volume, like both Pantera and Cointelegraph imply. It is good to see increasing volume from Paxos's it bit, as it does imply PayPal crypto is being used, but that use isn't a green buy button stuck on press repeat. So first, what is ItBit? Well, going to their exchange, it's an exchange with crypto asset trading built for financial institutions and active traders. It sounds pretty damn legit, right? Financial institutions, active traders, like it would be a pretty damn big force within the crypto industry. Well, pulling out their volume chart since last year, no, not really. They're averaging just about 5 million in 24 hour volume. And you wanna know what 
Paxos will say? They will say, we play with the big dogs, the financial institutions, and they buy OTC, over the counter, under the counter, aka off the exchange, off the books, which it bit covers below. Saying for trades over 100k, they do specialized OTC trades. So this just has me gosh dang confused. ItBit has weak arse liquidity, even with PayPal, like just over 20 million now, 24 hours. That is not deep whatsoever order books. And you could not get PayPal customers the best prices on their crypto just through ItBit as their order books are weak AF. And in PayPal's crypto agreement, they say this, PayPal makes money when you buy and sell crypto assets. PayPal will charge a spread or margin between the market price we receive from our trading service provider and the exchange rate between USD and crypto assets displayed to you. PayPal is making money off of you, your trades, they're a business. Now let's just go back to ItBit on CoinGecko. Their price for a Bitcoin on their exchange yesterday, it was $18,516. Now look at the current price average across exchanges at the same time, much lower, 18472 that's a nearly $50 spread. And if you didn't know, PayPal is offering solid prices in line with Coinbase and Cash App. How are they doing it when they're using an LP whose order books won't allow that? Well, just think for a gosh damn second. PayPal would not be using the ItBit exchange to make a large bulk of their Bitcoin purchases and sales. They would be using Paxos and their wide net of OTC. They are a big dog, which has only one goal, profit, and they want to make the most money possible off of each and every single crypto transaction. And using solely ItBit and their liquidity would not allow that. So what exactly is going on? Well, this June Coindesk article on the PayPal expected crypto launch explains it pretty well. An insider told Coindesk this, my understanding is that they're going to allow buys and sells of crypto directly from PayPal and Venmo. They're going to have some sort of built-in wallet functionality so you can store it there. And PayPal would be working with multiple exchanges to source liquidity. Multiple exchanges. So who is the other source? They obviously have to be working with more than one exchange to source their prices. Paxos OTC Network, another deal. And why is the volume on BitBit rising like that if that's not the source? A narrative being written as we speak? PayPal buying up all the newly minted Bitcoins, Bitcoin shortage, Camp it. So that narrative, and I hope you remember my video last week, Bitcoin's tether crash, black swan event, when? I highly recommend you check it out in the description or it'll pop up as one of those card things at the very end. Click it. Now that video was about the OTC channel crackdown in China and how miners couldn't sell their BTC through their normal channels. They could mine the BTC, they could exchange the BTC for Tether, but they couldn't use their normal OTC bank account routes to get fiat. And now, just recently, we are getting the narrative that this mining stuff is also causing a supply shock. The miners in China have to hold their newly created Bitcoin. Well, that's not necessarily true either. They can exchange it for USDT. So let's finish off this supply and demand episode with what Chico does best and look at the actual data to see if it is true. Terminal.bytetree.com tracks miners for spins and it tells us the first time any miner moves Lose their coins. They may not happen to be selling them or exchanging them the very first time they move them, but it does give a good ballpark estimate. Now, if we view the monthly, five week, and the three month, 12 week miners first spend, it signals that the Bitcoin miners have been selling into these markets. Negative BTC numbers and over 100% on the metrics signal this. So miners exchanging BTC, it has been operating per normal. Miners have been selling, just not into fiat, into tether. They're not being forced to hold in these markets. The supply is operating per normal. And a lot of this supply shock hype you see in the news, it is just that, it's hype. 
I'm bullish on BTC, but I try to hold the realistic footing in these crazy crypto markets. PayPal's crypto hype isn't that big yet, and there isn't a Bitcoin supply shock from the Chinese miners. But PayPal's real hype, it will be coming. Paxos is just an intermediary step. So going back to what that insider also said in June regarding PayPal and crypto. Number one, PayPal would be allowing buys and sells of crypto directly from PayPal and Venmo. Both of those are now confirmed as true. But number two, they said they were going to have some sort of built-in wallet functionality for storage. That isn't true right now. So remember, just last month, it was leaked that PayPal was in talks for the acquisition of the leading crypto custodian BitGo. What will this acquisition allow them to do? Provide wallet services, storage, and the ability to send and receive, not just buy and sell crypto assets. And that's when the real hype comes. Cheers, I'll see you next time.